Hey everybody, welcome to this week's video. You know I've got a pile of these benchers. Do you know benchers are benchers and nothing to do with a bench. They're booklets that contain the benching. The benching is the blessing after a meal, that's Yiddish. Actually, originally from Latin. The word benching is from the word bendiction, which means to bless. The blessing after the meal that is mentioned in this week's Parsha. And at many weddings, bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs, People give out these booklets, which you will use for the blessing after the meal at the celebration. And you take it home with you, and you have a little memento, like this one from Allie Haberman's wedding to Sharon, that was a couple weeks ago. Or Gavin Elman to Alyssa. Old friends, Gavin was, a, was at University of Chicago, I think class of 05 or something. We went to his wedding, it was fun. Maybe 07, I don't remember. My brother Levy's wedding, our wedding. We get to remember our wedding. We pull it out and we, I think fondly of those that wonderful night when we got married. Um, or Miriam Parachoki. Miriam went to school here. We went to her wedding. It was a lot of fun. So it's a really great thing. We collect them. And every so often we obviously have to, um, you know, throw them away. They get a little bit torn. We put them in the, in the box that will be buried with the other scraps of holy books. But what is benching? What's it all about? And I want to share a couple ideas you can take home with you and hopefully take introduce or take on this mitzvah. So actually, we have a lot of blessings in Judaism, hundreds of blessings. There's the blessings in our prayers. There's blessings before we eat. There's a blessing when you hear thunder, when you see lightning, if you see the ocean. There's a blessing when you see a king. Um... You name it, there's a blessing. But there's only one blessing that is mandated, mandated by the Torah. And that is the blessing after we eat. All the other blessings were introduced to us by the Anche Knesset Agadayla, the men of the great assembly, towards the end of the first temple period. The only one that the Torah says you have to bless is the blessing after the meal. In our parsha, it says you shall eat. You shall be satisfied, and you will bless God for the land, for the good land that He has given you. Okay? It says to bless God. There you go. You got it. So, what makes up the benching? So, we have the benching is actually made up of four blessings. The first one called the blessing of Hazon. Hazon es ha'olam kulay, the one who sustains the entire world. Betuvoy Hagadol with his great kindness. God gives us what we need. He sustains us. Who instituted that blessing? Moses. When the Jews received the manna from heaven, when they were in the desert, Moses instituted a blessing that says, God, you're the provider of all. And I often think about the meaning of this blessing. Whenever I'm concerned, I'm, I think about, oh my gosh, how could someone earn a living? How could this? How am I going to get? How am I going to get? Money, things are tight or whatever. I say, God provides the whole world with their needs. He can provide mine too. Of course, I mean, I have to do my part. But God can provide for me. The next blessing is the thanks for the land. We thank you for the beautiful land that you have given us, namely the land of Israel. Joshua introduced this blessing. When the Jewish people entered the land of Israel, he added a blessing and said, now we have to thank God for the land. Interestingly, both Israel, the land of Israel, and the manna have something in common. Unlike the land of Egypt, where the Jewish people were, which is sustained by the Nile Delta, by the river that irrigates the country, Israel needs rain. We need rain in the winter season, the rainy season, because in the summer, there's not a drop of rain. So we're very dependent on God providing the land, providing for the, for the land. So you've got the first blessing, which for the manna, clearly God provides. And the second one, which is for the land, which depends on the rain from heaven. The next blessing is asking God for mercy. Rachem, please God, be, be merciful on the city of Jerusalem, and your holy house. This was introduced by David 
for the city of Jerusalem when he established his capital in Jerusalem. And King Solomon added, and for the whole house, because King Solomon actually built the temple, when he went from the temporary Mishkan to the permanent structure of the temple on top of the temple mount in Jerusalem. And it concludes, rebuild the Jerusalem, the holy city, the constant idea of building Jerusalem, that was introduced by Solomon and David, that blessing. Now, the, those are the, what we consider the three blessings that are mandated by the Torah. They are part of the idea mentioned in the Torah to make the blessing. After the destruction of Jerusalem by the Romans, about 100 years later, there was an uprising in Betar, and the Romans were determined to completely destroy every single Jew in Betar. And they killed thousands, thousands upon thousands of people, men, women, children, made no difference, indiscriminately, completely murdered every single person. This was tragic. And a couple of years later, and they refused to allow them to bury the dead. That was compounded the tragedy. A few years later, when they were finally given permission by the Romans to bury the dead, they discovered that the corpses were still whole, miraculously. And in appreciation for that miracle, they introduced a fourth blessing which essentially says that God is good and does good and is gracious. And it's in essentially only implying that it is people that do bad. People that have given, been given the free choice that do terrible things to other people. But God is good and in His goodness sustains us and gives us kindness. And then that is the fourth blessing. And then was added other prayers that God is merciful, should bless the table, should bless our parents, should bless this and that, and send us the Mashiach. I just want to end with one little thought, something to think about. You know, we come to a meal, and we spend a lot of time preparing it, or we go to the restaurant, and we spend money, and we sit over the meal. Nobody, you don't eat in two minutes. You spend time, you enjoy it, you schmooze, and then the Torah says, spend a few minutes thanking God for the food. If we could spend an hour preparing and 45 minutes eating it, surely we can spend five minutes to bless God for the food. And so benching is not a children's song. Benching is an opportunity to show appreciation for the fact that I have food to eat. And for the fact that I'm satiated, that I'm satisfied, that I'm not hungry anymore. And it's a, it's a mature um, approach to take, that when I finish the meal, I show that gratitude. And I don't take it for granted that I have the food to eat. And I'm thankful for being have, given the opportunity to feel full and to feel satisfied from my food that God has given us. So take a few moments to discover the benching. Do it in Hebrew and in English. If you want to sing it with your family, that's wonderful. If you want to read it to yourself, that's also fine. And make the benching a part of your life, not just on special occasions, not just on Shabbat, but maybe every time. I'm happy to take your questions on the laws of benching, what foods, traditionally the long benching is only for eating bread, when bread is eaten. And if you're eating foods, that are not bread, there's a shorter form of benching. Um, a difference if you're having grain products or certain fruits or wine or versus other foods like uh, fish or meat or beverages. In any event, you could look that up at the back of your bencher. If you'd like a bencher, I'd be happy to send you one. Let me know. In any event, there's my thoughts on benching. I wish you a Shabbat Shalom.